everybody i was cleaning the horse trailer out today because i'm done using it with the baby training on unloading them up and stuff and i picked up joy and got her home and as i was cleaning out the trailer i figured it'd be a good opportunity to point out a few things in case a few of you may out there be looking for a used trailer so i wanted to show you a couple of things other than the obvious you know wheels tires lights uh brakes that type of stuff um, the floor is probably the biggest thing in these, whether you get an aluminum trailer or whether you get a, a wooden floor trailer. So either trailer that you get is going to have mats in it. They're going to have those three quarter inch mats and those mats are extremely heavy. People do not like to take them out of their trailers just because they're heavy and cumbersome and um, obnoxious really. But what happens is, is when the horses urinate, and even in their poop, when their poop is wet, it'll get on the edges and get underneath the mat, but it also goes through the mat where it butts up to another mat, and it goes underneath the floor. And you wouldn't think it would spread out, but it really does. And urine is highly, highly acidic. And on an aluminum floor, what will happen is, it will turn to a white powdery substance. So two of the mats are already out. Two of the mats are still in. It appears everything up here is dry, but underneath is wet. Like you can see there was a mat right here and that's where the seam of the other mat was. But if you look right here, that's all wet litter. You can see the dry right next to it, but all that's wet. And the reason it's wet is because of urine. And when that urine sits there, it starts corroding. And when I pull these mats out, right here where this seam is, right there, there's gonna be a bunch of urine that went in there and went both directions. If you're gonna use your trailer regularly, you're gonna to wanna to keep litter down in it or shavings down in it at all times to soak up any urine and any wet manure before it has an opportunity to get under the mats. It's still going to get under the mats. There's nothing you can do about it. It's going to get there, but the litter is going to absorb a lot of it. So every day you're going to want to, you know, just like mucking your stalls, you're going to want to muck your trailer, but about every three months, you're going to want to pull the mats completely out and give it a good wash down. Sprinkle some baking soda in there to neutralize the urine and then get a good warm soapy water and wash the floor out. Wash the mats out on both sides. Let everything dry and then reinstall everything. When you go to buy a trailer, you're going to want to pull these mats out. It's real easy to check the lights and the tires and the brakes and all that. But these mats are such a pain, nobody ever goes through the trouble to pull them out. And if you ask the seller, they're gonna tell you, oh yeah, it's great. And you're gonna walk in there and it's gonna feel solid. But if you pull up these mats and you see that, it, that your aluminum floor looks like a colander and you could strain your broccoli on it, you need to walk away from that trailer because that floor needs to be replaced. Those, those Colander holes are just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you get a trailer with a wooden floor, same thing. You're going to want to pull those mats out and you're going to want to examine that wood. That wood is going to absorb that urine and that wood is going to eventually start to rot. And as you're walking on it, it feels fine, but you may feel some soft spots and those soft spots are spots that are obviously rotting. And when all of your horse's weight, you know, is in a spot this big, you know, or a quarter of their weight is in a spot that big, you know, where they're standing, their foot will go right through the floor and, you know, they'll be stuck. You won't know it. You'll be dragging them down the expressway. Another thing that happens, not so much in the aluminum trailers, cause they'll, the, the urine doesn't have anywhere to go. It gets in all these tracks right here and it runs out. It, it typically accumulates back here in the back. But uh, when you're washing it out, you can wash everything this way. 
but on a wooden trailer, these are, you know, two by sixes. Um, and the, the urine is going through the two by sixes and it's dripping down on the steel frame underneath the trailer and it's dripping down on your steel axle. And it is just corroding the angle iron frame all the way around your trailer and corroding that axle. And if you were to crawl up underneath the trailer, you'll see a lot of rust because the urine is eating the powder coating away. This is what you gotta do is get underneath it. Now this is a 100% aluminum feather light trailer, but my axles are steel axles, but they're not getting any urine on them because of the way my floor's built. But on a steel trailer, you need to get under here and look at all these because you can see how the wood would just be sitting up on top of it and it would be leaking down onto your steel frame and it is just eating it away, I can promise you. Another thing is, is you'll see aluminum trailers. They'll, they'll be advertised aluminum skinned trailers. That is an aluminum skin over a steel frame. And Sunlight, I'm sorry, Sundowner had a trailer back in the early 2000s called the Sunlight 777. And those were steel trailers, steel trailer frames with aluminum upper. And everything on the bottom was rotting out rusting out, corroding out, and they were having major issues. And there was a lot of warranty concerns and a lot of warranty declines. And they were basically having to rebuild the entire trailers, but they did not have those trailers out very long. But those, those trailers had major issues. There are still manufacturers out there that will advertise, like I said, an aluminum skin trailer, but it is aluminum over a steel frame. And that steel is highly corrosive. And it, if you put aluminum skin over steel, there has to be an isolator in there. There's gotta be rubber in there or something in between those. If you butt two pieces of metal up to each other and there's not some sort of an isolator in there, you, you will get dissimilar corrosion and it will, it will leave you in a few years. So, if you're looking at one of those trailers, make sure that there's a rubber isolator or something, some sort of an insulator in between those two, two metals because uh, it, it can be a really ugly scene if you don't. A lot of people use their trailers every single day and they just say, I don't ever have time to wash it. But make sure you do a deep cleansing on your trailer once a quarter at a minimum, once a quarter, whether it's wood or um, aluminum and they've got the rumber floors, which is, uh, you know, a synthetic wood floor. And then they've got sprayed liner floor, like a truck bed liner and, uh, all that works, but you still gotta, you still gotta treat all the trailers the same. You still gotta do a deep cleansing on them. There's no trailers that are maintenance free. You want to walk on the inside of your trailer all the way. You want to step on every square inch of that trailer on the inside and feel for any give, any sounds, any softness, any give, anything. Because like I said, you weigh 150 pounds or 200 pounds and you know your horse weighs 1,000 pounds or more. Your horse is going to find that weak spot. So you need to find it before him. And it's going to happen at the worst possible time. It ain't going to happen on your farm. It's going to happen out on the interstate or when you're a couple hours from home and your horse is going to get injured pretty badly. So if you trailer, you need to have insurance on your trailer. But a lot of people don't realize this. The insurance only covers your trailer, does not cover your animal in it. So even if it's your animal, it does not cover your animal. It will only cover your trailer. So if there's a catastrophic incident and your animal dies, the insurance company isn't gonna pay you how much ever you paid for that animal. So you have to get individual equine insurance on that animal. You can get it for the replacement costs, which is the, would be the uh, purchase price. 
Um, you can just Google equine insurance and there's, they're out there just like car insurance is. So if you're worried about your horse and replacement and medical costs and all that type of stuff, you need to get an insurance policy on your horse. And if you're hauling a horse for somebody, they need to know that their horse is not covered if there's an accident. Every time I haul somebody's horse, I tell them, your horse is not covered. If, I, if there's an accident, I'm not liable for it. So they need to know that. And if there's going to be an issue, you need to have them sign a waiver or something. Because I have flat out refused to haul horses for my sister. Um, because uh, I just didn't feel comfortable hauling her horses. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that. They just throw their horses up in there and head on down the interstate, but they are not covered. You have to have an insurance policy on that horse. That's just a couple of things I wanted to cover when I was cleaning the trailer, made me think of it. So I hope you learned something. And if you're looking for a used trailer, make sure you check out your floor. As always, remember who you are, be kind to those around you, stand up for what you believe in. All back in the pasture.